Chow Jewelry Making Friends. My name is Joey Balistrieri for those of you who are new to my channel and if you are new welcome I'm so glad you are here and let's see I am on I think my fourth project from the Potomac Beads treasure box for the month of February. It was called Everlasting Embrace and here's a little list of some of the things that were inside and honestly I love their box every month. It is fabulous. The quality is amazing. The crystals, the glass Potomac pearls, the check glass beads, the findings. They have a new line called Athena Cast, which I'm going to be using in today's project, a couple of pieces from it. But that being said, this month really spoke to me. It was my colors of pinks and berries and purples and like my favorite colors. So I actually put all the beads away the, after my fourth project and said, oh, you know, I think I'm done with this box for the month. And then I kept thinking about what was in the box and wanted to do another piece. So this was the bracelet that I did in my last video using one of the little check glass tulips and this purple crazy lace agate and these beautiful little star beads and I just had some little check glass hearts from my stash and did a couple of unusual techniques with the seed beads that came in the box and a little copper heart and I started thinking just how much I love these little check glass stars that have an aurora borealis finish on them and they're in this perfect raspberry pink and we also received in the box we received a whole little bag of these little beautiful pink glass hearts. I mean, they are just so beautiful. They have such a nice detail even on the little V part of the heart. And I had not used these in any of my projects so far. So I decided to create a little bracelet that is going to be a layering bracelet, a coordinating bracelet with the one that I did in my last video. And I actually slept in this bracelet last night. I just, as I said, love this box so much. It's just something I highly recommend, not only for the quality, but the way the box is always curated so beautifully. And this month was no exception. So I did most of this off camera just because it's quite repetitive because we're going to be making links and connecting them and it's going to be a little bit of an asymmetrical pattern let me zoom in a little bit so you can see so i have almost an offset focal with these two hearts facing each other and then i did my little beaded chain alternating those hearts and stars and just added another little heart down here. So I'll show you how we did this component. Zoom back out. <laughs> I'll show you how I did this sweet little heart component. I am using a piece of 20 gauge wire in the copper with the anti-tarnish coating. Potomac Beads has a fabulous selection of wire and I'm just going to take this little piece. It is maybe, let me see, it is maybe a five inch piece. I don't like to short myself. I don't consider myself wasting wire when I have a working wire. And then what I did is use my round nose pliers and came right in the middle of that little piece. And I'm just going to bend those up, those two ends of the wire, so almost like wings and then just cross them over and what i'm looking at is making a loop in the center and i found that i get better um, rounds on my heart if i leave this straight up and down so let me show you this where my pliers are this is the little loop that will be connecting too. So you can take that away and you'll see I have a little loop and if you're making multiple components, you know, it's always good to go and kind of compare, um, you know, so that all your components look the same. So if you need to make that loop a little bit smaller, now's the time to do that. And, you know, I did hammer these little hearts so they are a bit organic and not exactly perfect not perfect by design. So um, as soon as I got my little loop 
pretty much the way that I want it. I'm using my six step bail making plier for this and I'm using the second um, I guess second smallest, I was going to say second largest, but the second smallest, I don't know if you can see the different steps, but I'm over here on this side and I'm going to use my loop as my marker. So I'm going to put that, that second size on the mandrel or on the bail making plier right next to that loop. And then I'm just going to bend that wire around and you'll see when I take it away and then you can always do some some hand shaping but you know I'll and I'll use my other hearts that I've made as a guide and then I'm going to do that exact same thing with that same on the other side I'm putting my putting that bail right next to my center loop and then just wrapping that around and you can over exaggerate your wrap if you want to you know because you have your little heart and then from there you can do your hand shaping and forming and you know I go back to the ones that I've already done and kind of make sure it's pretty perfect and then what I did is I took my chain nose pliers and on my shortest let me just make them tight together. On my shortest wire, I put my plier right in there and gave it a bend straight out to the side. And on my longer wire, where I'm going to feed a little heart bead, that one goes straight up. So I have something that looks like that. And now I can grab a hold of the little V on my heart and wrap, whoops, I have it backwards. Now I can grab a hold <laughs> of my little V on my heart and just wrap that just like a normal wire wrapped loop. Let me switch hands and reach for my other pliers. Whoops, I just do not have a hold of it. Now I wanna do the same amount of wraps that I did. I've done three on all of my other components. Okay, and just trim away that little excess. And then like always, when we do a wrap, we wanna make sure that the cut ends are tucked in, nothing is sharp, and you know, poking or scratching our jewelry lays on our skin, so we always wanna take the time to just tidy everything up. And so now I have this perfect little heart and from here you can like hold the hold this loop and pull it out or push it down whatever you need to do to match it to the rest of the project and then I put this on my bench block I wanted to hammer each one I'm not going to do it because you know I I've already done the amount that I want I just wanted to show you what I did and I'll show you the difference. Let me see if I can get really close. See the beautiful texture that the hammering does. And so I would do that at this point before I put my bead on and do it on both sides. And of course, don't hammer your wraps. And that when you hammer wire, you change the structure of it and it makes it a lot more rigid, more work hardened. And it's just really a great thing to do for the lengths of a bracelet like this. So pretend I've hammered this and I'm just going to take one of those beautiful little heart beads and thread it onto that wire okay it was the hole on that one so just feed that little heart bead and now this is just a normal wire wrapped loop even though it's a component just give it a 90 degree bend and put my pliers in there and because I'm making links I did stay close to the tip of my pliers because I'm I wanted to have consistent and fairly small loops through my hole through my whole piece and again I did three wraps on every component so I'm going to try to keep that going so it looks like a beautiful chain a beautiful sweet heart chain 
and just tuck that. I did, I did make these tight, being very careful not to stress this little glass bead, but I did make them tight because I wanted that little heart bead to be stay facing forward and stay facing the direction of my of my wire heart. I just trim that little bit away and tuck like always. And that little component is completely finished that quickly. And there you have it. Now this one is not hammered, as I said, and but I would I would hammer and I hammered my other ones. So that little heart component is done. And then I did the exact same thing with these little raspberry AB finish stars. And then I made some jump rings with the same wire. I used that same bail making plier to make some jump rings and I have a couple left and I did the same, that same step that I did the hearts on for the size of my jump rings. And this is very easy. I'm sure most of you have seen this done before, but I'm just going to quickly show you what I did. Just a little piece of the same wire that the hearts are made out of. And this is just a simple coiling motion just keep going around until you use up the entire length of wire and sometimes I even take my nylon jaw pliers and just wrap that little tail all the way down see how good it is and then I may get another another jump ring out of my coil that way <laughs> And then you simply find where you started coiling, can you see, and just cut a straight line. Do one at a time. Don't try to be in a rush. I love making my own jump rings. I love that my, that my metals, oh, and see, we did get that last coil from taking that little step of wrapping the tail around the bail making plier so we did end up getting that extra little jump ring so my jump rings are made and I'm going to use them if you can see what I did here I did double jump rings every every connection every component that I made that's connected to the next one there are two jump rings I just love the design of it I just love that extra added metal presence and it just makes the chain articulated really nicely and just adds extra dimension to what I've created so I'm going to do my clasp the same way with double jump rings so now we have some extra ones and what I'm going to do my clasp out of is this cool little halo bead or bead frame and this is from the new line from Potomac Beads. Let me just get my little bag in. This is the new line from Potomac Beads and this is called the Halo Bead. It is a one hole antique copper finish and this is from Athena Cast which is looking to me like it's going to be a really great alternative to Tierra Cast. There are 50 pages of products in the Athena cast line and they have things like this and head pins and bead caps and charms it just goes on and on and it is very exciting to have such high quality metal and plating so I'm going to actually use one of these halo beads and one of the copper ball head pins from the Athena cast line show you the package and I'll try to link these below the video in case any of you are interested these are the two inch ball head pins and they have the antique copper plating on them and I'm going to use turn this into a closure for this sweet little bracelet so one of the holes there are holes going from side to side so normally <laughs> you would string your wire or your bead stringing material through it like that and you can put a bead on the you know pull this back put a bead on the on the wire and then feed it through and wrap it but what I'm going to do is put this ball head pin through just one 
of the holes and just ignore the other one altogether. And then I'm going to take my pliers and do a wire wrapped loop right here. So just like we would normally do a wire wrapped loop and I'm going to stay about in the same place on my pliers as I did for my other components just to have consistency in my bracelet. And I'm just simply going to wrap down to that little halo connector. Let me get my other pliers in here to help me. I'm just going to do that and trim away that excess and I'll tidy up my little coil. And this is going to be half of my connector or toggle, if you will. Let me get both my pliers in here just to tuck that little end. Nice and neat. Okay, so <laughs> there's that little connector and that is going to go on one end, it doesn't matter which end, with a double jump ring connector just the way that I have done on the rest of the bracelet. So just like that, put, feed that on. Definitely want to make sure your jump rings are closed into a perfect circle with no space. I even put my pliers in this way and just make sure I even will, oh, it does feel a little bit sharp. I run my finger over it. and work harden it a little bit, very nice. And then I'm going to do a second jump ring. And I just love the sort of architecture of this look, but also it gives a little bit of extra security to the piece, to the closure and to the links. And just do the same thing. Make sure it is a perfect circle. Put my pliers there. Yes, very nice. Okay, so that is one end of our little toggle. And now I'm going to take another little piece about um, maybe six inches this time. I don't measure very often. I like to just <laughs> eyeball it until it feels right. And I'm going to start kind of the same way that we started with the hearts. Put my plier in the middle of that wire and just bend it this way. And this is going to be the start of our hook. I want to use my, I am going to hammer this to match my hearts, but I don't want to mar my wire because this will be my, my finished piece, my finished hook on my bracelet. So I don't want to damage this wire. So make use of those nylon jaw pliers. And this is the tip of my hook, so I want to make it as pretty as I can. Make those two, those two wires now kind of lay right beside each other. Maybe switch sides and use my nylon jaw pliers in this direction as well. Okay, and now I am going to take the shortest wire and I'm going to come up right about there. Again, I am just guessing. If you've never made a hook before, just to help you with what you're looking at, this is the actual hook part. So this is going to bend over. So you can kind of judge how much space you would like to have. So I want a very small hook. I want to keep consistent with the scale of my bracelet and so all I'm going all I did is just hold that with my plier and bend that straight out and now it's another wire wrapped loop let me get a hold of it this way and just wrap this around and I think I'll do three wraps just to be consistent with the rest of my design and then just come in and turn my plier and just tighten those coils so they sit really nice and neat next to each other. You could do a messy wrap here if you prefer that look, 
but I want to do a nice professionally finished wrap. And then just trim off and tuck like we always do with everything else. Can't find my end, there we go. There's no bead or anything. Now at this point, you could actually string a bead right here if you wanted to, if you did want to add a bead, any bead really, to your clasp, you could do it at this point. I am not going to do that because this will add some length to my bracelet and I was pretty happy with the length that I had. And so before I, before I make my hook, I'm actually going to put this on my little bench block. It doesn't take much. Let me clean a little space and I'll show you. This is my little bench block and it's quite heavy for those of you who don't have that. And I'm just going to lay this on here. I'm not going to be hammering my coils and just use my little chasing hammer, the same hammer that I used on my hearts, my heart components. And I'm just going to, I normally pause the camera for this and I'm sure that this hammering is bouncing <laughs> my table and bouncing the camera a little bit, but it's a very fast process. And then I like to go back with this, this little ball end and just add some dents. I really like that hammered look on a clasp. Okay. And so whenever you hammer, you do sort of spread and, you know, sort of change the shape a bit and that's okay. You can come back in with your nylon jaw pliers or whatever you need to do and get it get it going the way you want it. I just love making my own little clasp for a bracelet. So now that's what we have. <laughs> it doesn't look like much yet, but it will. And I'm going to come about two thirds of the way down. So this is going to be my hook part. And I do need to, there is a little bit of width to this halo bead. So I do need to have a little bit of width on my bend just so that it will go in there. I'm just going to bend it around my round nose pliers like that and then come in right here on the tip and just kick that out. So I have this beautiful little shepherd's hook and now that can hook right onto this halo bead. I'll adjust it. Sometimes I pinch it closed. Now that may yeah, it's not too bad. I need a little bit of width to the back here just because of the width of that halo bead. But you can make those adjustments. You can, you know, hand shape, hand sculpt your clasp after you have everything on. That looks great. And now to finish up, we just do a simple wire wrapped loop on this end. 90 degree bend normal chain nose or round nose pliers and I'm staying in the same spot as I did on my other components and just wrap nice and neatly down to meet the other wraps that I did. Just fill in that space and again if you want this thicker you could wrap over it and wrap back up or you could do a messy kind of a boho wrap, but I really like the neat wrap. Let me put my hammer away and just trim. Normal trim, tuck, and, <laughs> and straighten. <laughs> I absolutely love making my own jump rings, making my own clasps from the same wire that I have done in the piece. It's beautiful. It's consistent. I have this anti-tarnish coating on everything because the wire is anti-tarnish and so now I have this gorgeous little clasp and I just need two more of the jump rings that we made I'm going to repeat the same thing and connect double jump ring connection on this little sweet bracelet wonderful 
So now I have this beautiful little coordinating bracelet that is very easy to clasp. I'm going to close that loop just a little bit now that it's inside. And look at my beautiful coordinating little heart bracelet. Oh my goodness, I loved this box. And I, I, hearts are always in season for me. I just love them. And I am crazy about the copper with the colors that were in this box. But the box did come with silver findings. But, you know, we should always have fun and do what we love, use the finishes and the colors that we love. And so, you know, feel free to mix metals. That is a big trend for 2024. And, or put your favorite in with it. But we, I had did do one piece with the silver findings that came in the box. And I will link those videos below if you have not seen those. I have had a fabulous time with the February Everlasting Embrace treasure box from Potomac Beads. And so if you do not subscribe to that box, you will be really impressed with the quality. And so I'll link the Athena cast, I'll link the treasure box below and my other projects with this box in case you have not seen them. And I am so grateful that you chose to watch my video today and be on my channel today. And I thank you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Just tap subscribe and the little bell notification. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't obligate you to anything. And it would really be a, a, just a, a gift to me because, you know, it supports my work and my channel and helps me to grow my business. So thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I hope everyone is safe and well and having fun on your beading mats. See you in the next video. Ciao, jewelry making friends.